Today we're doing 20 questions with Dean because everyone asks me about Dean and it's easier just to ask Dean about Dean. The first, are you the silent business partner of Aquarium Co-op? No, but I have met him and he's a really cool guy. When I first met him, I didn't know that that's what he was. That was what he was. So he's silent. Because, well, because I don't know whether it's because he's silent or because he's being polite or... Probably, yeah. But we've had lunch together with him a few times up there working. Um, yeah. A very hard worker, but it's not me. Right. You are very lucky to have him. I say that all the time. That's right? true. You know, you got to remember back to... I'm 27, he's willing to invest $50,000 in me, and I have got no experience. like tangible business experience under my belt. I mean, I ran one, but that there's some, you know, it's like, I watch, I watch my, my parents drive. I can drive, you know. It's right. like, well, that's not how that works, you know. There, there's, there's not very many people that would have done that. No, and I know that. And that's why, because yeah. people... You know, in our really our, our business relationship, he gets twenty five percent of everything we do, right, right. which right now is a huge chunk of business. But back then, it was you also got to realize it was like, hey, you get twenty five percent of the money I lost this month right. or this year. You know, like yeah, you need to give me some money back. Yeah, yeah. so it, it you know it, it was definitely a huge risk, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're not the silent business partner, but I do yeah. on camera. You do get some money, so you sell fish. Yep, you do yep. that. And then also videos that you appear in, I give you one third of the what it makes. Right. right. So that might be like a hundred bucks a video, or you know, it depends. Some videos do really well. Whatever it is. Some it don't is. do yeah. very well. Yeah. So yeah, you do have. That's why you have, not just my friend, but part of a, a vested interest. But I would tell you, Dean's a very capable human being, and if he was looking to make money, there's several avenues for him to do that, like shipping you guys fish or whatever he wants to do. So he's right. mostly doing it to hang out and just kind of help the co-op and the hobby further along. So that's... So wait. Yes? How did you meet your silent partner? Is it a school? No, no. I met my silent partner... Uh... Bar? No, because I don't drink. I don't. Yeah. That's why I said it. <laughs> the game shop that I used to manage. So we played Magic okay. the Gathering together. I ran the tournaments and everything. We met through there. I guess just played a lot of, a lot of Magic together. Then I think we played some World of Warcraft, a video game online together. You know, I was just working at a fish store and all that, and he, he worked at Les Schwab, and they always get kind of big bonuses. Right. Uh, so you work really hard, and at the end of the year, if the company's profitable, pays out a bonus. But he, I, you know, I got to be honest, like, at least half of it was him saying, I think you should open up your own store. Like, there was another guy named Andy who uh, was saying that as well, but that wasn't really on my radar. Like, I just was like, I'm 27. I just need to get a better job. Right. That was what I was thinking. Um, yeah. So... You know, in that I may have been reasonably well at launching the aquarium co-op and all of that, but someone still, you know, finding the person to do that, that's that's like hiring, you know, hiring Randy, hiring Jimmy. Those have been, you know, great hires. Lots of our employees are great hires. That takes a skill to find that. So even right. if someone has money, that doesn't mean, like, because otherwise anyone would take $50,000 and build aquarium co-op. Right. So he had right. the skill to, one, believe in me, but then two, you know, invest that money in the person he thought was going to work. So right. Worked out pretty well. The next question. Where have you found the energy or the drive or whatever it is that makes you tick to always kind of be an ambassador to the hobby? Like ever since I've met you, even before you knew who I was, you were still like trying to get other people hyped up in the hobby. Because it's fun. The hobby's fun. Most people don't have a hobby in their life. Growing up, I mean, you know, we did like, Stamp collect. We did everything they did back in the fifties and sixties and seventies. Stamp collecting, coin collecting, uh, archery, shooting skeet, loading shells, working on. We did all of that. I think what cemented the hobby for me was um, actually spawning the fish. And and I often say this: I don't get in the tank and spawn the fish. Basically. The fish do all of that themselves. Right. Um, all we're really doing is setting up the conditions to let them do that. So, and then, um, you know, helping the other people, um, that's just been what I do, I guess. Yeah, because there's know. a lot of people with your success that they go down the other path of like being 100% secretive of like, right. 
they don't want people to learn what right. they're doing and all of that and and just you know even before you ever got on YouTube or anything right you could watch you just spend time with someone at the club and that kind of stuff right yeah I would say every advanced hobbyist <coughs> has probably some form of secrets that they do sure um, I think any that I might have over time just gradually come out mm-hmm but they might not come out to the beginner. They come out to the people that I understand that would benefit from that. Yeah, the, as I always call it in, in like talks that people give or visiting someone's fish rooms, the, the in between the line stuff of like, they didn't tell me about that, but what I noticed was missing. Right. Or, you know, that right. so you kind of learn by having seen a bunch of stuff similar. Yeah. I mean, it's like when, like when you've done the um, international fish food farm tours and fish room tours mm-hmm. it's like i'm there saying you didn't ask that why didn't you ask that you know yep. because those are the things that as an advanced hobbyist i want to know all right it's a little easier well <laughs> i think it's easier when's the last time your fish haven't eaten for a day so i know you always get people to feed when you're away that kind of stuff but do you ever just go yeah, I'm just too lazy or whatever. I'm not feeding today or I'm taking the day off or anything like that. Cause All the time. Really? Because from outsider looking in, it seems like you're just in that fish room nonstop. No. You're feeding six times a day. No, the, the only ones that I would say are unsafe, not eating for a day, are the fry under two weeks old. And if you don't feed them, there's some that will die. Because um, I always feel super guilty of like, Dean probably fed his fish four times a day, and no, here I am, like no. I'm super busy. I don't know if I'm I mean, gonna be able like, to. Like we were looking at the discus, they haven't eaten, they didn't eat yesterday, and they haven't been fed today. Okay, but you probably fed a lot of other fish yesterday, or no? I fed everything else yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. When, when's the last time that like nothing in your fish room got fed? Day before I went to California last time, I just didn't have time. Okay. Um, I, I fed the fry, and that was it. So you fed the fry, but I'm talking you like can't, you, the fry do, would die. Do you ever just take a whole day off of the fish room, like nothing gets done? Is there like when is it got to be Christmas? So like yeah. when, what days that got to be? No, for you? no. I mean, it happens once in a while. Um, and is it out of you're too busy, or is it out of like usually, I just don't feel like it today? You, usually, I'm too busy doing something else. But I've literally lost whole batches of discus fry for not feeding one day. Or I'll give you a good example of. Even missing one feeding at night, like that's why when we're up working. Right, you set an alarm and he leaves my house. Because if, yeah. if, if they don't get fed before dark or before the lights go out, chances are they're not going to be alive the next morning. Dang. Or if they are alive, they're not going to grow. What's your best tip for someone new to cooking? You thought I was going to go fish keeping. Someone but... new to cooking? New to cooking, yep. Like you're, you're saying your daughter is kind of... And they want to learn to cook? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, or or they're just playing around in the kitchen. There's a difference. Okay, well, explain that. Yeah. So I mean, so if you want to learn to cook, I would kind of stay away from YouTube at first. Okay. Or I would find a, a classical cooking channel where you learn the classic sauces, classic cuts. Le- knife skills is important. Start with good equipment. Don't start with the 99 cent dollar store chef knife so does that mean like if Corey wants to get into cooking you can't well not that you can't but maybe your advice is don't just go to target and be like i bought kitchen stuff i'm ready to cook no no um that does not work in your case you just go to your wife she probably has right she's got (laughs) yeah she knows how to cook and all of that but but um and what originally got you into kind of the culinary field i've been cooking forever I mean, so even before you were like, oh yeah, 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 you were just you enjoyed cooking. Was that a hobby or, well, or just like I need to so, cook for my family? So let's see. We've been mar- I've been married. I can't remember how many. A lot of years. And in that time, I've probably done over, three dinners ever. No. Over seventy five percent of the cooking. Okay. Um, because I it I find it relaxing sometimes. It's not always relaxing, but sometimes. We, we moved to Cleveland for um, two and a half years. It's, um, can I say it's an armpit of the state? <laughs> no, I can't really say that. Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> Akron is much better. <laughs> it is. 
Um, and Columbus is better too, but Cleveland, you know, but anyway, we moved there, we moved back. When we moved back, it was the end of the Y2K. At that point in time, I was a, a certified internet webmaster, which meant nothing, except for I knew a lot about a little bit, a little bit about a lot of things. I was also doing computer consulting, uh, had just brought a whole bunch of companies through the Y2K thing, which really didn't end up existing. I kind of kept doing that for a while, but then I just needed something else. And then the idea of going to culinary school and getting the um, AA degrees. And How old were you when you went into school? We're back into school or whichever. I was 50. Wow. Or close to 50, real close to 50. Okay. The thought was, you know, I would do it and then possibly open. I wanted a small restaurant, um, you know, maybe 13 to 15 tables where the customers would come in and they would know who the chef's cooking. And also an open kitchen, which means basically you can see the chef cook your, your meal. So uh, the restaurant thing never did happen. It never will happen. Uh, I did work in restaurants couple with open kitchens, a couple without, but the timing just didn't work out to open my own place. So. All right. What's the largest aquarium you've ever kept over the years? 180 gallons, two of them, one over the top of each other. Oof, that sounds horrible. Yeah, it was on, I made the, I made the stand out of four by fours and four by sixes. You know, one was almost on the floor, probably about, about, Two feet off. They were only they were custom made tanks, so they were only oh, okay. They were only two feet tall, and then I had a foot, and then their other one, and basically, I could reach to feed it, and that's it. But if I wanted to service it, I'd have to get on a ladder. How many? This wasn't on the thing, but now it has me wondering: like, how many aquariums have you kept in the living space, like over the years? Because like your wife. Usually never more than, stuff. like, this is the only one really in the living space. Yeah. That's right, you're going to need the water for this one. Mm -mm. So being that you're old, we've established that. Who is the best speaker at a club? Because you've been to like a million meetings at this point and several different clubs. Who's the best speaker you ever saw in person? Is there anyone that, you know, it could be from a kid, doesn't, you know, like as you were a kid, doesn't well, matter, you know? When you, I would more describe it as who made it the most fun. Where'd my water go? Right, right there. Here. Okay. Who made it the most fun? Okay. Okay. So one of my favorite speakers is also one of my oldest friends and kind of a mentor in the hobby, um, Dick Al. We did discus together a long, long time ago. Um, he taught me a lot about discus, a lot about breeding, and I uh, did some work for him with construction stuff. And when he talked for a club, it was always entertaining as well as informative. But another fun, one of my funnest moments in the GSAS, which is my local club, uh, one of our own members, um, Lawrence Kent, mm -hmm started his talk with a t-shirt giveaway and you know everybody's excited he's got this t-shirt and you i forget what he did he asked some question and whoever answered it first got the t-shirt and it was just a plain white t-shirt it just it was funnier than heck well it's a good thing we have lawrence kent i think he's i'm not sure he is day. going to he yeah. speaks like November, maybe? I think so. November, somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen him talk. And times. guys, if you're not a member, if you are a member, you're going to want to stay a member just for that talk. He's really, really good. Why is it that you still breed fish? Like, you've had a career of breeding fish for a very long time. Right. My guess is not the money. Oh, no. It's never the money. So, what, what keeps you, considering you keep a fish room... Your wife doesn't even live in the state at the moment. Right. Like through as much adversity as I've ever seen, you're still like, got to get back and feed the fish. Yeah. So um, I guess you would call it the negative traits. Okay. So like just today we were at the shop. Mm -hmm. We were looking at these pencil fish that I swore were not pencil fish. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, Jimmy was saying, well, maybe they're the males. And you were saying maybe that's males, females. And I'm like, 
I've never seen males of females of those or males of those that look like that. And you know, it could have been a certain collecting location. Sure, could have been they've been tank raised to look like that. We don't know. We don't. Or because it. it was ninety five degrees, they're just like on fire and they're, right. they're ready to breed. Right. You know, whatever so, it is. Whatever it was. So they were a type of pencil fish and. My initial thought was, okay, I got to take those home until I realized they were just the normal pencil. <laughs> I can't buy fish without the thought of trying to breed them. That's a hard, that's hard for me to do. So, uh, a, as you know, downstairs, there's hardly any display only tanks, right? It's my genetics, you know, they built into, I, I want to try to reproduce these. Is there a Holy grail fish you're still after? There's, I wouldn't call it a holy grail, but if they legalized them again in the States, I would get an Asian arowana. I, I don't know that it would be a holy grail, but it's a fish that I've, I have kept them in the past. Right, when they were legal, yeah. When, when yeah, when they were able to be um, caught. Maybe 495, I think, was legal. Yeah, it was a long, long time ago, yeah. When they became illegal, I had a fish room. And it kind of got to the point where I felt like, she's if the wrong person comes over and sees them. Right, which they were legal, but it's still... But it's, yeah, yeah, but they had moved to the list or whatever. Right, and at the time, we didn't. you wouldn't have known, you yeah. know, are they being weird about this or aren't right. they? Like, yeah, and so I, it, I found it better just to, okay, it's time for those to go. What's your favorite treat that someone could bring to you at a convention? Like if you were speaking or you're at the aquarium co op booth, what 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 would be like, oh that's nice. Oh man, that's a tough one. Probably brownies. Really, huh? Okay. Yeah. Like a salted caramel brownie. Are or... you a sucker? Like if you're at a convention or something like that, and there's like the little deli and they have like the four dollar brownie that's this big, are you a sucker to buy that no, thing? No, you know, I I mean, probably most of the time not, because a lot of time you're gonna be after salty stuff. Yeah. Right? Being that I now know that you love brownies, but, I want you to make brownies. I wonder if... No, I don't, I don't bake. Um, one of my favorite cookies is white chocolate macadamia nut cookies. Ugh. And a lot of people don't like them. Yeah, I mean... I love them. Yeah. Huh. So... My silent business partner, he's all about that. He's and, actually and even, normal chocolate. But when it comes to chocolate, I'm a milk chocolate person. Is that a dark? Not a bittersweet chocolate person, yeah. Okay. All right. This one, I think, is a question maybe very few people could actually answer besides you, I think. How long after moving a fish room, right, does it take to get as settled in or proficient that your room is like now? So you've you had to move to Cleveland and back. You've had to do all these like fish room moves. How long does it go from you were producing and doing what we want to do to back to where you're, you feel like the fish room's back where it was or better? Well, you can get producing fish in a week. Sure. Especially if you do any live bears at all. Yep. Or or any of the, you know, easier egg But layers. if you were going to move your fish room to a new house, how long do you think Before it would I felt be... like the setup was right? Yeah, before you felt comfortable like you do now, let's say. Um, I'm still not comfortable with mine. Not big enough. Sure. You know, I mean, we talk about that all the time, but... I think a better way to phrase that question is how long before all the bugs are worked out. Okay, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And my guess is that's going to be six, eight months. And you have to work work it to know that, to find out that is a bug. Right. Um, in, in your case, we started out thinking that that quarter inch line mm -hmm. would be enough pressure to get... And if we wouldn't have tested it on the first row, if we would have just put it all in, we would have been tearing out a lot more. What's something that you think that everyone else is doing wrong in the hobby? Keeping snails. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, that comes from, I just did a video with Zenzo. I saw that, I haven't watched it. About but... the positives and negatives. Uh, there was one thing that I did not mention in that video. I've been collecting in Peru three times now. There's only one location ever that we found snails with the fish. And most of your aquarium snails are not from any of the native waters where your fish come from nowadays. Sure. Ram's horns, pond snails, bladder snails, 
Those are all from our own water. Go back to the question again. That's not really the right answer. Yeah. The, you know, what do you think that everyone else is doing wrong in the hobby? I don't think everybody's doing everything well, wrong. Well, a majority. Like if you just, you know, but, like, you know, a lot of people are doing this and I just think that's not right or whatever. I, I, okay. One of the things that I think a lot of people do that, that I mentally object to, I don't really come out and say it a lot, is they want to play doctor. I've heard you say that to me before. Yeah. Yes. So we've talked a lot about, you know, just put some salt in a lot, you know. People want to buy a whole medicine chest, treat this and treat that. And I mean, I get questions all the time. My fish have um, worms. What do I do? I'm like, how do you know they have worms? You know, do you see them? No, I don't see any. I just know they have worms. You don't know they have worms. Some of that stuff you have to get a microscope mm -hmm. microscope to, uh, to see. And I used to have a microscope and I used to analyze fish poop and all sorts of stuff. I used to cut dead fish open and look at their gills and see what's on there. In reality, you know, fish, even in my fish room, die almost every day. Not all of them. You know, I mean, a fry might die. Ten fry might die. Um, a whole batch of fry sometimes you might die. You don't feed the discus fry, you get a whole batch. Of exactly. Worms. Or they get stunted and then they die, you know. So, so I think playing doctor is something that, is in my opinion a negative experience in the hobby i mean i have half of a medicine chest probably but it's mostly from for quarantining when i when we bring them back from travel all right here this one might be a thinker for you do you think social media has been good or bad for the hobby overall because i asked this because you were very much a hobbyist before, way before, you know, the internet and hobbies kind of took we, off. We used to have to call on the phone. Yeah. Or, or when you tell me there's a party line. Yes. For fish or something. Like no, that? no, no. I grew up, we had a party line. I see. So, I see. you know, you wanted products from a place like aquarium co-op. Yep. You have to go to the post office, get a money order, mail it. And they're, they have to get it. And then you would have to get, they would have to mail it back to you. Um, I don't think even back then there was UPS and FedEx. It was so dang. It was all that. mail. In my life, they've always been around. So I, I didn't realize that like FedEx that kind of stuff didn't exist at one point. I mean, um, I, obviously, but I mean, the correct answer, if you want a correct answer, is both. Social mod media has helped, but it's also hurt. And it's helped when you have people that are doing it with. Good intentions first, money comes second, and it's mostly hurtful when there's people that are just jumping in there for the money. And they, I mean, they're saying everything or they're just copying someone else what they're saying. I mean, you're just telling me today how you got ripped off on a thing yeah. you bought on, on from, a, from a, a used or a, a from used a hobbyist, filter, right, basically. Yeah. A hobbyist. In my own club. Yeah. You know, um, you know the hate mail. You've sure. had hate mail. I've had yeah. hate mail. You make one wrong comment to somebody and they take offense and pretty soon they get someone else to jump on board and then all of a sudden there's 10 people on that boat and sure. I don't in, no one enjoys that I don't think um, no one likes to be on the receiving I mean, end of that I mean and and I'll give you so I used to manage a couple fountain pen forms and on one of them we had um, what's called IP tracking Mm -hmm. there was one guy that would post on the forums and then with an alias, he would have an argument with himself. <laughs> and I could tell because it, it was all the same IP address. So we also had pen shows just like you guys have Aquashella and the other shows and stuff like that. At one of the pen shows, I just went up and talked to him. I said, why are you doing that? Said, That's not me. I said, yes, I know it's you and you know it's you. And he said, well, I was just trying to get more people involved, but it, it became a negative, not a positive. Mm. So, um, so there are people out there that do that even sure. in this hobby, you know, so. What is the most difficult fish you've ever worked with? Can't think of any. See, I mean, I, I thought I knew what you were going to say. I mean, I thought, I mean, the puffers are frustrating. 
Okay, that's not the one I thought of. But, but yeah. the zebra plecos that's are also I frustrating. Of. Yeah, I thought but of that. Si- but, but in reality, they weren't difficult. Mm-hmm. I got them to breeding size three times, and I did have some breeding happen one of those three times. Because there was some fry, even. There was fry. Yeah. Yeah. The equipment failure is what yeah. killed them. Second time I got them, a heater stuck on. Third time I got them, a heater stuck on. I don't care if the heater's a hundred bucks, if it's gonna last me 20 years. Sure. Sorry, I'm gonna choke. Do you wanna take a little break? Film a little bit more with the uh, day in the life of Dean. Camera's overheating because he doesn't have AC, because he's a madman. (laughs) And now it's time for a commercial break. And now we're back to our normally scheduled program. That's right. The overheating, of it's so hot, the camera's overheated. So are we. This is video number four of the day? Five? Four? Who knows? Well, Jimmy, you, he could turn, <laughs> he could turn three into day. four or four into five. How has online shopping changed your hobby? That has changed for the better. Without a doubt. Everybody pretty much out there knows. If they don't know, you know now. I don't ship fish. Corey doesn't ship fish. But we buy fish online. That's true. <laughs> One of my air, the big piston pumps went out and you were carrying the new one. Yep. And I ordered, I had it the next day. And I'm not sure, you know, I mean, I live relatively in that one day zone. From sure. Co-op. Sure. That used to be a week process, right? So now online and, and you could go on Amazon Prime and get stuff the next day. I think it that's a good change in the hobby. And yeah, occasionally you get burned. Mm-hmm. But there's always risk and reward. Sure. You know, so. Do you think to be a good breeder, you have to compete with yourself? And the reason I ask this is, I think that you've never competed like in the breeder award programs and that kind no, of I stuff, did. right? Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. I got tired of it. What used to be the thing is you'd have to breed, write an article, give away babies, and then you would get points it's not worth it to me because I was, I would, I was breeding too many fish. Mm -hmm. And so I would be, I mean, for back in the day, you know, I would be spending all of my time writing and, and, you know, when I started out, we didn't have a computer to write that on, you know, it was a typewriter, you know, and uh, you had to be a good typist to not make mistakes. Money. I don't think money ever has really been the goal. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and sometimes I have picked up rare, expensive fish, but it's more to challenge myself than to make the money off of them. Have you ever considered retire- retiring from the hobby? Many times. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I can think of two since you've known me. Really? Actually, probably three. Yeah, you know, when the zebra plecos die, that's like a huge hit. You look back on it now and you're like, okay, that was $1,000 worth of fish. But is $1,000 worth of fish and a year or sometimes two years worth of time taking care of that, which is probably another $1,000 worth of food, sure. time, energy, water changes, probably even more than 1000 So it'd be really easy to say, okay, screw it, I'm done. Would you ever consider teaching a class online uh, about fish, you know, kind of drawing from your teaching passion with culinary students? Yeah. You would consider it? Mm-hmm. Wow, okay. It had, it had to be the right the right situation. I did not yeah. expect like a, a so fat yes. Like yeah. <laughs> you must have thought about it or something already. No, well, I mean, me and you have talked about different ways that I could present videos and stuff. Sure. But like, a, would you do like a weekly class? Like, oh, it's... Wednesday night, it's time for fish school, you know? Yeah, I would. I mean, if the situation was right, I would do it. Yeah. Sure, sure. What's the most work, effort, or time that you've ever done to acquire a fish? Collecting wild fish in Peru. Okay. That is grueling. It's not always backbreaking, but it's kind of like today. Yeah. You're dripping in sweat. You got bugs flying around. We don't have bugs flying around, fortunately, but yeah. but it, it can be very grueling. 
Especially if you're not catching anything. And, and if you're not getting the things you want or think that you want, we always, I mean, at least me and you always go with a pretty open mind what we're going to get, mm -hmm. right? You know, sometimes we're really surprised. Other times we're like, okay, well, no, I don't want those. Um, but other fish, you know. Well, not, I know like you used really. to go and, you know, you'd fly down and, and shop hop and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I still have fun doing that. But the problem is our shops are all gone. Yeah. Um, I mean, not all gone, but they're they're. How important do you think local stores are to the actual aquarium hobby? A lot. You do? Yeah. I, th I think um, I realize there's some good chain stores out sure. there. But I think it's the mom and pop stores that are the backbone of the do hobby. Do you think the hobby would go away without the yeah. mom, without it, the it, I don't retail think it would... stores? Like if, if, if you could only ever buy fish and supplies online, do you think the hobby would go away? Not completely, but it would it would really diminish. You know, there's nothing that replaces that personal contact. Um, you know, could I could I call the store for advice or not our store? <laughs> you probably couldn't, but could you leave a message and you, you get yes, it? Yeah. yeah, we we do like our local customers actually have a line that we can call you back on. But yeah, I kind of do agree because. You know, I'm fairly checked out of the hobby because every day I'm proofing a blog article or a video right. or something. Right. Like, my job is fish. But then today, you know, we were shooting the kind of the day of life vlog for Dean, and we stopped by my store to take fish. And even I instantly fall in love. I have to have that. I have to have that. Did we ever get that fish air? He's in there. He's fine. Well, you hope so. He better be. It's like 90 degrees. He's probably out of air. He's fine. Okay. I hope. All right. All right. So last question last that I question. have. And, and I'll add my part to it. Okay. Because it'll give you a little bit of time to think and put it in context. Uh, who or what are you jealous of in the hobby? So for me personally, I'm jealous of Greg Sage's setup. Not in the way that like the tanks are set up, but the fact that He's kind of one man on a quest to breed his fish and sell them and make a business out of it and is doing it. And he's not online with the other hassles. He doesn't have a retail store. So he's, you know, the lure of, you know, a boy and his dog, a dog and his fish, basically. And then he just tinkers and good stuff comes out and people appreciate it. And he's got enough of a notoriety to know that, like, he did some good in the world, but not enough so that he can still go to a fish store without being recognized and he can do whatever he wants and keep that one on, you know, that personal hobby. So that's, that's what I'm jealous of. And it's probably for me, it's obviously I can't have that anymore. So that's what I lust after. But, uh, right. you know, what's, what's, what are you, who or what are you jealous of in the hobby at this point? I don't really get jealous very easy. Uh, but if I could do anything over right now and we kind of, shared the stupid channel that I started 11 <laughs> years ago. Sure, sure. I should have stayed with that. Aqua Dean. I mean, I wouldn't use that name. Oh, you're bound to it, buddy. No, no. I wouldn't be named Aquarium Co-op and here I am. I know, I know, I know. I you know. know, I'm Aquarium Co-op forever now. Yeah, you are. But but um, if I would have stayed with that, I would have got better and better and better. There's a lot of misinformation out there. I mean, okay, Big Bob, I'm going to pick on you right now. Sorry. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You know, you did a video with Danny, who's somewhat of a beginner, not an entire beginner, telling her to not do water changes. Stupid. <laughs> Sorry, Big Bob. We're done now. Uh, so, I mean, you sat in a river in Peru, and I said, remember, Corey, this is when you got to answer the water change questions. Sure. There's millions of gallons of water going by these fish all day. And, and I, I'll bring up another thing that we saw in Peru. Remember when we saw that one narrow, let's call it a long skinny mud puddle, where we could obviously see fish at the surface and there's all the dead fish around. Mm -hmm. And Michael and Devin said, don't, don't catch fish out of there. They're not going to survive because they're already dead. Birds weren't even eating them because right. they were so oxygen starved. So... Um, you know, do fish need, yes, they need water changes. I'm sorry. 
yeah, plants, plants will take care of some of that, but it won't take care of all of it all the time. All right. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> you can still beat me at ping pong. I'm okay with it. 